course, our second hearing. Uh, I don't think we should be here today. Uh, I don't think 346 people should have died, and I believe that uh, this was preventable. Uh, we have family here uh, today who lost a daughter, and uh, we'll hear from them at a future meeting. But uh, there are a lot of questions that still remain unanswered, and we're pressing forward uh, with this as a very comprehensive uh, investigation. A lot of it leads back to the organization delegation authority process, certification process, the question about the role of engineers uh, in this process versus that of operators, pilots, and other safety professionals who uh, uh, work on those uh, work on those planes. Um, the it's inexplicable to me, and I asked in the first hearing, I asked the acting administrator, I said, uh, uh, is this a safety critical system, MCAS? And he said, yes. And uh, my question then was, how could we allow a safety critical system with a single point of failure? We do not allow that in the aviation industry. Well, the answer from Boeing at an early meeting after Lion Air was, well, the pilots were the backup system. The pilots didn't know it existed. And the original system was relatively mild. 0.6 degrees of deflection, uh, you know, not uh, repeated uh, overrides of the pilot's command, and, um, you know, that was in the manual. But then the Boeing engineers changed it to two and a half degrees, repeated overriding uh, the pilot's decision, and asked the FAA to take it out of the manual. Now, that to me is shocking. It's in the first manual when it's a relatively mild system that kind of is similar to what we're gonna, they're proposing uh, with their fix, except it will have two angle of attack sensors input uh, and other modifications. So how could the FAA agree to that? Did they understand what it did? Did anybody understand what this would do? I don't think the implications uh, were fully known. There have been 14 versions of this plane since 67. It has been an incredible workhorse airplane. I, you know, I've flown on one, I'm sure, thousands of times. I've flown up six million miles since I've been in Congress. So many, many, many times. But at some point, you gotta think there's a cutoff where that this is a new plane and it's different than the one from 1967. And it shouldn't just be an amended type certificate. It has to go through recertification. Now, of course, that's a longer process. It's more expensive. It might require pilot retraining. And the question is, why didn't we get to that point with this plane? And that also goes over for the longer term, looking at the certification uh, ODA uh, process. Further, we discovered that the agree, disagree light was inoperable. Uh, in many of the planes, the ones that hadn't bought the extra package, apparently inadvertently, according to uh, engineers. Uh, but uh, this was not reported to FAA for a year. And until it became public, Boeing had no intention of fixing that to 2020. Could that have played a role uh, in uh, helping to prevent these tragedies? Well, we'll never quite know that, will we? Um, you know, that's unacceptable. And we have been in touch with both uh, Boeing itself uh, and United Technologies Corporation, who designed that software uh, to ask for a timeline and some explanation of how they think uh, that is a proper uh, procedure. Uh, you know, we're gonna hear today from uh, a number of people who are gonna provide a compelling testimony. I won't go through the list again. Others have mentioned it, but I wanna uh, thank you for uh, being here today. Uh, we have now begun to receive a substantial uh, numbers of documents from both Boeing and the FAA. Uh, and uh, I have uh, the oversight staff and the aviation staff uh, going through those documents. Uh, the, and we uh, will, uh, I expect, fully expect at a future hearing, have the FAA back in and have Boeing into this committee. Uh, once we have uh, the documentation digested that we need to ask the meaningful, very pointed questions we will ask. With that, I yield back the balance of my time.